This is the new DJI Dock 3 with the M4 TV drone. All right, so I gotta climb this ladder to get up on the roof now. This should be fun. Okay, hey, I can see it. There it is. So this is it, huh? This is it. I'm Chris Goring. I'm a detective with the Kent County Sheriff's Department. I'm assigned to the Sheriff's Department's Technical Service Unit, uh, which is the drone unit for our Sheriff's Department. And this is the uh, Dock 3 from DJI that we've been demoing for the last few weeks now. The dock is on the top. It has a little wind speed up there that tells us the current temperature up here for the dock and then the power supply. So all remote, we can look at the camera from anywhere in the world and then we can also fly the drone from anywhere in the world. Now, underneath the dock, we have a cellular connector, a cradle point that has multiple SIM cards so we can use either AT&T and Verizon or both, uh, whatever gives us the best signal and that's what we use for the internet connection for the dock. There it goes, and the drone is up in the air. So the pilot for this drone right now is about 45 minutes away in the northern Kent County. So he's flying it uh, off his hotspot on his cell phone uh, using his laptop computer. So he has complete control of the drone. He'll launch it, fly to the west a little bit, and then he's gonna come back and land the drone back into the dock. And it's all, once it comes back, returns to home, it's all autonomous, it takes off and lands all by itself. Are you able to like plan out missions and execute those missions even if you're not here in the station? If you're out on, you know, on patrol and you've got to be able to send out the drone, everything is done remotely. That, absolutely. We've actually had a uh, couple calls for service where uh, in this area, this dock, the, the operating range is about two mile radius. Mm -hmm. So uh, if a call comes out or a law enforcement call comes out, we use it to kind of get that first response of, the drone first responder just to get eyes on the area and kind of what's going on. We had a domestic assault complaint that came out. Our pilot was about 20 minutes away. He was able to pull his cruiser over, log into the dock remotely, and then uh, fly the dock and get on scene within, by the time we actually beat the, the responding units there. Um, oh wow, so it's faster than even a trooper can get there. Exactly, Amazing. yep, yep. So we uh, man it with uh, observers so we always have a observer on staff to where if we're gonna launch, then the observer can come out and watch the drone as we fly it. Very cool, yep. love that. The nice thing about it is that we can input an address into the, the software. So instead of having to kind of look around and figure out where the address is at or the house is at, we can actually input the address. It automatically creates a flight path and then it will either hover directly over the target address or it'll stop before the target address and then hand the camera down onto the target. So law enforcement wise, it's a great option uh, because for tactics. We don't want a drone flying right over a hot scene, if you will, to give kind of our position away or what we're doing so we still have that element of surprise. Right. Um, the second feature it has is, let's say we're out doing a call for service and it ends and another call comes out, we can then shift to that next address and fly there directly. Right. Um, it's all autonomous flying, which is nice. Amazing. It's just manned. Cool. Um, it lands and takes off by itself. There's obstacle avoidances that we can put into the system. Like if we had a huge tower in the area, we can circle that tower and then the drone will always do a flight path around it. So it's never an issue. So okay. How much battery life do you usually get out of it? Um, it's all weather dependent. So yep. if it's windy out, obviously the drone is going to use more power to keep steady. Um, but typically we'll get about a half hour flight time out of it. Okay, nice. So this range, it's got a two mile radius um, as far as out as we'll go. Um, but we usually don't like going out that far because we want to push the capabilities of it. So typically what we'll do is we'll fly up near that two mile range and then use the zoom capabilities of the camera to zoom into what we're looking at. And that way we still have a good connection. 
uh, both with the camera and with the drone. Right. So very good. It does have safety features. If it does lose link, it does come back and lands. Like a return to home feature. Exactly. Very good. Exactly. Nice. I think most of the guys in the survey industry are using autonomous drones to do like mapping missions, but you know we are the ones that set it up and we fly it. Um, having its own docking station and having it pretty much truly autonomous, lifting up, going, and then coming back to its starting position, and it could be several, you know, thousand feet away um, if you're flying over a mile of distance. Um, it could be quite challenging, and I think that that might be a concern that a lot of people have. Yeah, absolutely, and we do that with our other drone units. We do the, the mapping for like uh, exit reconstruction and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the M30T, um, the th M300 that we use mainly for that. Um, this for us is just a quick response drone, um, but it's nice having it just remotely in position. So the drone's on the way back now, so it'll fly autonomously back. It'll get above the docking station. The docking station will open up and then the drone will land itself into the cradle and then uh, the, the dock will close and then the, it'll begin the charging process once it gets back into the cradle. Coming down. So the prop starts spinning like that, so as the dock closes, it'll fold the props over. And now it's all contained and the drone is now charging. The dock three has been great. It allows us in law enforcement to use it for the drone first responder, not only with mission mapping, but allows us to uh, broadcast the live feed back so we can transmit that feed to our command for any kind of uh, tactical advantage, but it's been great for us and it's been very reliable, uh, trustworthy. It's freezing out here right now and the drone's <laughs> working flawlessly. Um, you know, it's never been really an issue, so we're ha super happy with it. Yeah, no, I think in the, in the surveying and in the construction world, we could use this for construction monitoring if we're doing, you know, repetitive mapping missions rather than sending out a crew every time. We could definitely use a you know a device like this to constantly visit a site, do the mapping, and come back to our headquarters. So I think there's a lot of great applications for our industry and for yours um, to be able to use this type of technology. Yeah, so, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Detective, thank you so much hey, for your time. Appreciate it, no problem. Appreciate it. Yep. If you guys like this type of content, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the Survey School if you're trying to learn more about surveying, and I'll see you guys next time.